Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well and thank you for joining us for another video. Today we're looking into claims that the video footage from the International Space Station is all just CGI green screens and wire harnesses. And I have to actually thank one of my Patreon backers for this because they messaged me recently as they're sceptical about NASA and wondered if I'd be prepared to make a video tackling some of the examples that they'd found online of video footage that conspiracy theorists say is proof the ISS is being faked. So they sent me six clips and here we are. Now the first clip comes from Level Earth Observer. Now this is footage from onboard the space shuttle as it approaches the ISS and Level Earth Observer believes he's found proof that the ISS is in fact a CGI overlay. Our pal here is going to look out the window supposedly at the International Space Station and just like before in a previous clip which we looked at, the special effects department are going to let down all these space fantasists by layering in the space station inside yet again the window seal of the space shuttle. And in all its slow motion glory. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a terrible error, yet again, by the special effects department at NASA, as they've layered in their space station inside the windowsill of the space shuttle. So he's claiming that the ISS is being overlaid and that it's incorrectly overlaid over part of the window frame. And to be fair, at first glance, it's easy to see why he might think that. Now, from the footage in his video, it shows that the space shuttle in question is the Endeavour, and they mention that one of the astronauts on board is Doug Hurley, who only ever flew on Endeavour on STS-127. So, presumably, that's the mission in question here. Now, I was actually able to find some photos taken from that same mission, one of which happened to be a view of the ISS through the window of the shuttle in the same manner as in the video. And comparing the still image to the video footage, we can see that the dark black strip in the video is not actually part of the physical window frame. The window frame itself is the lighter strip which is actually blocking part of the view of the ISS. Question now is, what is that black strip? Now if we take a look at an external view of the space shuttle, you can see that the windows are not flush with the outside of the hull. They're recessed in slightly and are surrounded by these black tiles which sit higher than the window itself. That's what we can see here on the still image. Now, we can also see from the video that the left side of the window frame is being strongly lit by sunlight whilst the right side isn't. So the sun is actually way off to the right, which means those black tiles being raised above the window will be casting a shadow over the window. And that's the black strip that we're seeing and it's why the ISS can appear through it. It's a shadow, not CGI. Moving on to clip number two, which comes from at Flat Earth over on odyssey.com. Now, this contains a few different examples. The first one is uh, from a live stream interview on board the ISS with three astronauts, and at the end of the stream, after they've waved goodbye, the feed goes very strange, and some areas blur out while others don't. And the second example is something similar with an individual astronaut. And Flat Earth claims that this is proof of a green screen that's gone wrong. This is a big deal because it means without any doubt whatsoever that there was live editing and video manipulation. Now, Flat Earth actually skirts very close to the explanation for this when he points out that there are a few other objects in the shot that also mess up. When you look at this thing, this thing, this, and the actors, they are the only things that mess up. Including an object in the top right corner that he's missed. The crucial factor in this is that in both examples, the objects that mess up are objects that are moving relative to the camera in the shot. And this really boils down to how video compression works. The most common video format these days is MP4 which to save data doesn't save all of the information for every single frame of the video. Instead, it only saves information for pixels which have changed compared to the previous frame. So the first frame of the video will be all of the information, but then the second frame will only be the information for any pixels that have changed compared to the first. If there's no data, then the stream simply displays whatever was on the previous frame. 
and the only pixels that change in the video are pixels where objects are moving. And it's worth remembering that the video stream on the ISS is being very heavily compressed before it's being transmitted from the ISS due to any bandwidth restrictions. And heavy video compression always leads to an increased risk of artifacts. So if the video feed from the ISS gets interrupted or suffers from interference, then the computers on Earth that are receiving the feed will continue to display the pixels from the objects that aren't moving because they won't have changed, but the pixels for the objects that are moving, it will still be trying to render them, but the data for those pixels is now getting distorted. The video then provides another example of an astronaut heading down a corridor and appearing to fade away before he's out of shot. There's this one video where the actor is going around a corner and he is faded out before making it completely out of the viewer's sight. However, we can see there's a white object on the left side which suddenly moves in a faded way at the exact same time and a few other objects in the shot also suddenly jump at the same time as well. Which points to this being a fade transition from two different parts of a video clip rather than a, an overlay fading out. Now, there isn't enough information available for me to track down the original file to see if it appears there or not, or if it's something that's been done afterwards, but the only reason that I can fathom for it being in the original clip is if the clips were again suffering from it, some interference. However, the fact that there are other objects in the shot that behave in exactly the same way at exactly the same time, for me rules out the notion that the astronaut is being overlaid in CGI. These appear to be nothing more than the video stream data suffering from interference. But a good way to stop data being interfered with is by using Atlas VPN, who are sponsoring this video. Cyber attacks are an ever real problem these days and your data can easily fall into the wrong hands. But Atlas VPN helps protect you by encrypting and rerouting your data through one of their secure servers around the world, which prevents unwanting eyes from tracking your information. It also comes equipped with a feature to block trackers from even the most popular of websites and a breach scanner which checks your emails to see if they've been involved in any online data breaches, so you'll know if any of your passwords are potentially compromised. With just the one account, you can install the software on unlimited devices around the home, so it doesn't matter whether it's Windows, Android, iOS or Fire devices, you can keep the whole family safe whilst online. And my favourite part about Atlas VPN is that it lets you choose which country your information gets routed through. So if you ever come across a website that hides certain content based on the country you're viewing it from, you can trick it into thinking you're actually viewing from a different country and will then let you access the content. And if you use my link in the description down below, not only can you get a whopping 83% off their three year plan, but for a limited time only you'll receive an additional three months extra free and all with a 30 day full money back guarantee. So why not check them out today? Next, we have some more videos from Level Earth Observer, which he claims shows proof of CGI. Now, the first is an astronaut putting a microphone up to Chris Hadfield's guitar and the microphone disappearing. So is our mate here just lost the plot and decided to stick the microphone inside Chris Hadfield's skull? Or is there a bit of a special effects meltdown going on here? And then a different clip where an astronaut reaches out for a microphone cable and the cable appears to travel through his hand. Bob's hand at points goes straight through that cable. Again, highlighting special effects problems, namely green screens and augmented reality, which these people interact with as well. And as a result, you get things like this, people's hands passing seemingly through cables. Now, both of these can be attributed also to heavy compression from the live stream causing artifacts. By the very nature of reducing file size, information has to be discarded, and both of these examples are clearly very low resolution footage, so the compression's likely to see things like a very thin cable or a small microphone head that are surrounded entirely by a single colour and decide that that's a very low priority detail to keep. We actually see another example of disappearing microphones in this clip when it's against the astronaut's blue suit. Neither of these examples really point to CGI problems though, because even if it were CGI, 
the people themselves in the footage are real. The only argument for CGI would be if they were shot in front of a green screen, which then was made to look like the inside of the ISS. But all of these distortions take place with objects that are in front of the person themselves. There would be no CGI going on on the person. It would only be if objects were directly against the green screen that it would potentially cause an issue. Then we move on to the evidence of wires and harnesses being used. Firstly from Psalm 19 over on Odyssey, with various clips showing t-shirts sticking out as though being pulled by a wire. Firstly, it must be remembered that on Earth our clothes naturally drop due to gravity, which keeps them fairly tight against our skin. But in zero gravity, the clothes will just stay where they happen to be sitting. Such as an astronaut patting you on the back might pull the t-shirt away from you, but there's no gravity to cause it to drop back down. Then there's an example of Tim Peake trying to do a backwards roll. Now this to me seems nothing more than he screwed the roll up, and rather than moving up and away from the floor before spinning, he instead leans back low to make the spin, which causes his head to hit the floor. Now, it's out of shot, so we can't know for sure, but his body definitely drops way too low for a backwards roll, and his sudden movements and rise back up would coincide with him getting his hands onto the floor to spin himself around. And then Sam's last example is another astronaut attempting to do a backwards roll. Again, he's not putting much force into this backflip, so he's only turning rather slowly, and he's in a very confined space surrounded by three other people. You can actually see the guy in the back try and move out of the way as he almost gets a foot in the face. It seems the guy on the right is merely trying to help a colleague around while keeping his eyes fixed on the monitors rather than looking to see what he's doing. And I can speak from experience, it is pretty tricky to get your hand in one very particular place and grab an object when you're trying to do it by looking at yourself in a monitor. In reality, wires holding up a person's weight would never be invisible. Even if they were made of a completely transparent material, there would still be signs of distortion and light catching them as they moved around. They certainly wouldn't have a system with multiple people being in such close proximity because that would just cause all sorts of problems. When wires are used on film sets for this sort of look, the footage goes through extensive VFX to edit out all of the wires first. This footage is being broadcast live during interviews, there's no time to meticulously edit out wires frame by frame. The final example, however, claims to show a wire being visible and comes from Flat Earth Awakening. Claiming that you can again see the harness on the astronaut where his t-shirt's rising up, as well as a view of a wire itself. I start the weekend by debunking the ISS. Two points of reference would I make here. One is top and two just above it. Essentially the top being the anchor point where the harness is coming away and of course just above it where the second arrow is pointing at some remnants of the uh, harness itself which I think they faded out but at certain points we can see it giving the game away. It's nice and quiet as well. And now super slow motion. Look at it, see it? And you'll see it on the other side now for briefly, see? Now, as before, the raised t-shirt can be explained simply by being in zero G. He's had his arm raised up past his head, and he then puts it down to his side, which, even on Earth, can leave a lump in the material over your shoulder blade. The apparent wire, though, was a little more interesting, and after some digging around, I was able to work out that this was a stream done with astronauts Megan MacArthur and Thomas Piskey, and I was able to find the original broadcast and have a look at it. Now, at the start of the broadcast, Thomas has an iPad stuck to his right leg, which isn't on his leg at the time that the wire apparently makes an appearance. Because early in the broadcast, he removes the iPad from his leg and sticks it onto the edge of the white box behind him, which is exactly where the wire apparently appears. Seems far more likely that what we're actually seeing here is merely a reflection of his right arm in the screen of the iPad. After all, this is a 20 minute broadcast with lots of objects moving around the frame, including a basketball that they take out from the storage compartment behind them. That proceeds to float around and rotate quite freely for quite a long time. It's not swaying around side to side as though it was hanging from a wire like a pendulum. So that is going to wrap up this video. 
Once again, thank you to my Patreon backer for offering up these examples. They were definitely interesting to look through and to break down. And as always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.